call to order the study session of the Board of Education of Tuesday, June 28, 2016. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will have a closed session at the end of this meeting and there will be no action taken at the end of that closed session. This is the first chance for public comment. A member of the public may address the board briefly for up to three minutes or request to be scheduled on the agenda of a future meeting. Would anyone like to make public comment? Administration. Um, at this point, before I make my remarks, I will turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Ellis and we are going to honor our retirees. So, ladies and gentlemen and members of the Board of Education, it is my honor tonight to recognize five of our most recent retirees. We just had a uh, small reception down in the cafeteria and we asked these five to come down here and be recognized formally by the board. So if those five could go over by the American flag, I would certainly appreciate it. As they walk up there, we have with us tonight Deb Budnick, who taught at the high school. She was our earliest retiree, retired back in December, so uh, we've missed her since then. Patty Hanis, Director of Transportation. Sue Malka, Food Service, over at Woodland Meadows. Belle Porter, a uh, paraeducator and ESP president for a long time from Harvest. And Dave Steve, who does the mail for us, as well as driving bus, and is one of those people that's just in every building. Um, five years ago, when, when we uh, honored our retirees for the first time, we started uh, giving our retirees a poem that I hope um, captures our feelings about you, and the poem is called The Builder. And it, it reads, I once saw a group of men in my hometown, a group of men tearing a building down. With a heave and a hoe and a mighty yell, they swung a beam and the sidewall fell, which is happening a lot around here these days. <laughs> <laughs> I asked by the men, are these men skilled, the kind you hire? If he wanted to build, he laughed and said, why no indeed, for common labor is all I need. For I can tear down in a day or two what it took the builder 10 years to do. And I asked myself as I walked away, which of these roles am I going to play? Am I the type that constantly tears down as I make my way foolishly around? Or am I the type that is trying to build with care with the hope that the people will be glad I was there? And I want you to know on behalf of Salinity Area Schools, we are very, very glad you were all here. And it's our privilege to be here tonight. Safety numbers if you go together. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Um, I really needed to have this experience and it's been tremendous to have it at Saline High School. It is truly the premier, premier high school in the state. Um, and I appreciate your support, the board, and your, um, your involvement in the Board of Education um, for helping to provide this kind of education for our kids, and my kids included. I have two graduates and one that will graduate next year, and I'm just for kicks bringing one in from Sweden to graduate. <laughs> come to Celine High School next year. And so I just want to thank all of you for the last four years. Um, I've enjoyed working with all of the administrators that are sitting in this room and the board members, and it just has been a phenomenal experience. So thank you so much. I'm glad I'm ready. Just a couple of quick updates from the Ministry of Picture. One thing, Cypress Ridge is, if you've been by there, you know that they're building fast and furiously. There are families moving in. So far, we've registered nine students from Cypress Ridge. Um, eight of which are new to Saline Area Schools. So when we think back uh, a couple of years ago when we started talking about that project and our intention to really to um, work collaboratively with the builder to design family-friendly homes, it's working, and so it's great to see that bump in enrollment, at least from that sum. So that's exciting. And then ultimately, also too, uh, we had our, our second kind of summer steering committee meeting today. Um, and I just wanted to publicly thank Janice uh, Warner, Rex Clary, and John Harigers. They're part of the team that really kind of keeps an eye on what's going on. There's a lot of work going on from an administrative side, managing those projects, and they're doing an outstanding job. And we're on schedule. We continue to kind of ask tough questions of that team, and they continue to have good answers for us. So we're moving uh, moving forward. Our next meeting will be on uh, the night of the board meeting on the 12th of the afternoon. So we're going to start developing more subdivisions. Well, so that we, we may want to think of it. I like it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good, a good process. Get him a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries 7-0. Our first action item tonight, can I have a motion to adopt the amended General Appropriations Act for the 2015-2016 year as submitted by Assistant Superintendent Warner? So moved. Fascinating as it was. Um, does anyone have any more questions that you thought of since we just finished the budget hearing a few minutes ago? No? All, right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries 7-0. Can I have a motion to adopt the General Appropriations Act for the 2016-2017 year as submitted by Assistant Superintendent Warner? So Support. Yay, state for giving us money. <laughs> I'll preserve my comments for next year if they take it away. <laughs> but there we go. Any other comments? Can't use the word bone this year. No, you can't. I can't. You cannot. Not in any way, shape, or form. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries 7 0. Got a motion to approve the borrowing of funds in the amount not to exceed two million five hundred thousand dollars in anticipation of the state school aid and authorize assistant superintendent Warner to approve and sign such documents to execute the borrowing in conjunction with legal counsel review. So moved. Support. So the application for a state aid notice due by June 30th, and um, we go through a cash cash flow process. And through that, determined that we could reduce our amount from three and a half million to two and a half million for this coming year. Um, as we have done in the past, we'll solicit bids from local banks and also um, through it's called the MAC. I can't remember what it stands for, but it's through Detroit, so it's larger banks as well. And if we get a better rate, then we will go with those. Otherwise, we'll go with the Michigan Finance Authority. If we go with the Finance Authority, we will have to pay it over five months. I believe it was March through July. It'll take a portion of our state for those five months. If we go with an outside bank, then it would just be due on, uh, I believe it's August 21st, when our August state aid payment comes in. And this is reduced because we have more fund balance now? Yes. 
did we go through the state or private last year? Private. Private. And things looking that way again this year? I would hope so. Hope so. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries 7-0. Can I have a motion to approve the special education staff laptop refreshment in the amount of $87,197 as submitted by Technology Director Kelstrom? So moved. Second. Um, just to note, this is, uh, these are what is new laptops, or what we call a refresh laptop for our special education staff. This year they were, I think, four-year-old devices. Yeah, they have four-year-olds, so this is the, the four-year cycle of replacement for those laptops. They take a beating. Um, if you're familiar with our special education staff, you know that they have a lot of IEPs to do, so having a mobile device that is effective um, is critical to their success as well as their student success. So looking forward to getting these purchased and getting them deployed. And I thought I read in your memo, Heather, the used ones are going yeah, we will always repurpose. repurpose. So we will clean them up. If we can add RAM or other parts, we'll do it. And then we put them right in the student's hands. So we just continually using them. They'll probably have a shelf life of seven or eight years in the end. Good work. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carries 7-0. Our first study session topic tonight is the strategic framework update, Superintendent Green. All right, I will get started. I um, am not gonna be having all of the speaking parts. So if you have a speaking part, you can come forward from the back of the room. As we get started, as, as you know, uh, the strategic framework really provides some guidance for us, but I want to start with our, our vision and our mission and to make sure you know our vision continues to be that we will achieve world-class status for our students and staff, for student and staff performances based on the highest quality of educational practice and human ideals. I think that's a, a clear vision. Our mission, which in addition to our vision has been really around since the mid-90s, is that we'll equip all students with the knowledge, technical proficiency, personal skills necessary to succeed in an increasingly complex society. And if you jump to the end, our ultimate goal is to instill in our students the desire for lifelong learning. And so in order to do that, that's a, that's a lofty goal, um, certainly a, what I would call a North Star goal, but ultimately we've really tried to identify what are the components of an educational system that engage learners in such a way that it builds a desire for lifelong learning. And it's my hope that, that you, as we go through our strategic framework, you'll see some of the components of what we're trying to do in order to, to achieve that mission. Um, Again, the strategic framework is designed to articulate our vision and the mission of Slane Area Schools. It provides a roadmap for the board and for the administration in terms of where our, our focus and our energy should be spent. Um, provides clear direction for staff. We often have conversations about does this fit to our strategic framework and certainly if you think of the, the emphasis we've had relative to next generation and social emotional help, you'll see those components um, supported in, in our framework. Provides a focus for the community. Uh, we want to have a simple plan. We actually have are, are proposing our vision of going from five goals to four goals, uh, but ultimately, right, we want a simple plan that provides clear direction and, and focus for our community. But ultimately, the, the goal is to, to make sure it's a plan that uh, provides us with the opportunity to improve student success. And so we're going to go through each of the four goal areas um, of note, um, particularly for the, for the finance folks. The, the, the fifth goal that was added a couple of years ago was the finance goal. That goal did not go away. What we did is we collapsed goals one and two. Um, if you recall, one was very much a foundation of goals about proficiency um, in core academic areas by grade three. And then the, the second goal was really a, around a global society with, with kind of that future ready next generation. We've collapsed those into one goal. And so goals one and two are now just simply goal one. Uh, goal two is formally goal three, goal three is formally goal four, and goal five is now goal four. We're actually going to go through kind of a descending order. We're going to start with goal four, which is a financial goal. So I don't know if Janice, you and your team will be uh, kicking it off here. Oh, before I do that, sorry. <laughs> Jumped the gun a little bit there. Just want to talk a little bit about the revision process. First of all, this, this strategic framework was originally adopted in, in August of 2010 been revised a few different times. We've had you know, kind of a large scale, in 2010-11, had large scale stakeholder uh, process associated with flushing out action steps. 
This year, um, we really wanted to make sure that we continued to focus on our strategic framework. In a 2015 retreat, we met at Ford, uh, and, and a couple of Celine parents actually provided us with how Ford manages their strategic plan on a, on a consistent kind of weekly basis from their standpoint. We looked at some of the tools they have. We developed essentially action step forms. There's a kind of a form we use to really help us look at measurables in, in, in terms of our action steps. We met seven times as a large group between September 22nd and June 7th. Each of the goal area groups, and you'll see the teams listed up here, met at other times to really continue to flush out and go deeper into the areas of focus. And then um, certainly reported um, out to that larger group, the draft revisions, and, and modified based on feedback. So for example, goal one went first and they came and reported back to the full administrative team. We gave them feedback in terms of the work they had done and they revised the plan based on that. Um, I included the Doug Reeves quote um, just to, to make sure people, our plan is very, in, in some ways a very simple plan. I think it's a very nimble and fluid plan because of that, it's important. And, and again, it's the idea of, of the bigger your plan, the, the thicker your binder, the more pages on your website are socially defined doesn't necessarily mean increased our higher student achievement. Now, goal number four. Right. So my team decided I was all warmed up from the budget process. <laughs> <laughs> our goal did not change. It's district shall establish short-term financial stability and long-term fiscal solvency. Um, I think we started with four step action steps and we've refined that down to three kind of streamlined things. So the first action step is to employ long-range forecasting and financial planning, which we have been doing over the last couple of years. Um, but a big part of this is developing a replacement and maintenance schedules for the departments and buildings. Now our bond work is going to cover a lot of that, but it's not going to cover all of it, and neither is sinking fund and neither is the set-aside that we talked about earlier. So we need to develop those schedules. And it's a little hard to do right now because we don't entirely know what the bond is going to cover and not and so on but that is something that we will continue to work on over the next year and come up with some, some schedules and then update them annually for budgeting purposes. We also want to continue to update and streamline the long range forecasting tool. We've used that a lot in finance committee and it has its shortcomings, but it's also very useful. So we just want to continue to refine that. Um, we've been on New World Systems, our financial software for a little over two years now, I think, in, in the payroll section we've been on for about a year and a half. Um, but there's still components of it that we don't use. For instance, we will do a fixed asset audit later this summer, and then we hope to be able to upload that information into New World and maintain our fixed assets on through our financial software going forward. Um, unbudgeted one-time funds will be dedicated to building the fund balance of the general fund. We want to continue that and also dedicate funds for future capital project needs when possible, which we had talked about earlier tonight. Action step two is align and manage district resources to support the district's strategic framework goals. And we hadn't really talked about this in our original framework, but we need to make sure that whatever is happening with goals one, two, and three, we can handle them financially. Um, so how do we get that information back and forth? And we decided that we would develop a form for goal captains to use to provide that initial information so that we can determine if it's financially feasible to, to do the initiatives that they would like. And then we want the goal captains to meet at least quarterly to discuss those initiatives, or initiatives and priorities and then bring them to the board and central admin to prioritize them and decide what we're going to actually do. And then the third and final action step is to provide multiple opportunities to increase staff and community knowledge regarding school funding and district priorities. So we want to make presentations to various community and staff groups via the um, DPC, which is the PTA PTO presidents, um, maybe to Rotary, different area groups, just to help them understand how school funding <coughs> works. Um, we also want to provide a regular schedule of sharing district financial news. It might be adding something regarding financial data to Steve's news and notes that he sends out every week, um, making sure that the budget blog is up to date you know, on a regular basis, things like that. Um, we'd like to provide informational postcards to area realtors so that they can have information available if, if um, clients are coming in and saying, tell us about Selene Area Schools. We can highlight some of the things that we're doing include some financial information, include what the um, tax levies are for, things like that. And then we also want to provide descriptions of the purpose of 
the Saline Area School tax levies to mun municipalities. We actually did this a couple of years ago with um, Pittsfield Township, and they put it on their website. They, they, did, they gathered the information from all the municipalities or all the school districts that were within their municipality. And I think it went over well. People could kind of see what they were paying their money for. So we would like to do that and also put it on our website as well. So that's goal four. Any questions? Goal three is a shared responsibility for culture and climate. So Kurt Ellis, Joe Polka, myself, Rex Clary, Michelle Chekowitz, and Brad Vizu were on the Goal 3 committee. And essentially our goal and the goal of Goal 3 is to enhance a positive school environment that promotes students and staff well-being, satisfaction, and positive morale. This goal used to be just referred to as the morale goal. And, and it was perceived that it was Scott Graydon's responsibility to make sure that the morale of all 600 employees and 5,300 students was good. <laughs> and what we're trying to say now is that this is a shared responsibility that everybody's got a voice in. We identified five focus areas, physical well-being, social and emotional well-being, career well-being, financial well-being, and community well-being as target areas that we can focus on. And our goal really here was to provide resources for people, be they students or teachers or staff, that they can look to. So what we ended up doing, these are all hyperlinks, so the social emotional well-being takes you to a document that we've got on our website that's got different apps that people can look at. Obviously, over time, we're going to build in community resources to this as well. And there are there are hyperlinks to each of those things. <coughs> Some of the action steps that we looked at, um, they're really activities. Uh, wellness is supposed to be action and movement and fun, and a lot of the things that you'll see uh, are up there for that. Uh, the Healthy Hornet website has become a good resource uh, for our staff. Um, all kinds of different organic things have taken place, uh, Fitbit groups, uh, challenge kinds of groups, um, just kind of getting back in shape, getting uh, fit, um, and that's been a real focus for us. Um, some of our activities that we've done as a, as a group, tech track and through special education, uh, the Polar Plunge, uh, Team Katie was ultra successful over the last uh, several months and just making sure that we take care of one another. That's important to us in the wellness school and, and throughout the Saline Area School. So um, at the student level, uh, looking at Hornet Hour and looking at some of the social emotional components and kind of re redefining that a little bit and making that more meaningful for the students. Um, the wellness topic of the month, uh, Human Resources, I think has done a nice job this year developing a calendar to kind of highlight the themes for each uh, month, a, a different walking challenge, for example, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so that our, we're all together on these activities, so they're not just so hit and miss, but we're all doing many of the same things. Uh, wellness and happiness, as we know, is never ending, that search and journey for that. Uh, so this is going to be a continuous process, but it was really good for us as, as a team this year to kind of refine our lens and look at that. So the revision process really was a, a great activity for us to go through. That's goal three. Can I ask a quick question? The wellness topic of the month now, that's for staff? Really, it's, it's a community-based thing. So for example, the, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, our goal would be to have some um, informational material that we share. Um, some of this stuff too, and we've done some things to tie it together to some of our insurance data. Um, we know that there are certain areas where maybe we're not getting the screenings to the level that, that our peers are in other areas. And so we can make those points of emphasis, but they're really informational pieces that are designed to be for the community. So do they carry down to the students too? Or can, yeah. Yep. Well, didn't they start a healthy eating something club? They the have, and, and you know, you bring up a good point, Paul. I think one of the things that we need to do is there are all these different initiatives happening kind of in a vacuum from each other and we need to, to really continue to bind them together into one kind of cohesive plan. Any other questions? All right, goal two, uh, and I'll jump back over here. So it's to strengthen family, school relationships and continue to expand partnerships that support student achievement. The four action steps did not change. You'll see who uh, our group, Julie Campbell, Kirk Evanson, myself, Brian Puffer, David Raft, and Michelle Sontag. Uh, we worked through goal number two. And, and again, I'll jump to these uh, 
into the uh, the action steps here. The first one, looking at effectively engaging the community um, regularly about state area schools. Certainly, our surveys of family, students, and staff. We really continue to, to try and seek feedback. Um, whether it be myself, special education head survey recently, our school district climate uh, surveys. We do some staff engagement surveys in the fall, kind of talking to them about how schools gets uh, has gone. The Let's Talk expansion. If you've noticed, and hopefully some of you may have gotten emails even from us trying to elicit feedback from the community. I'll have some reports for the board uh, later this week in terms of looking at over the last several uh, months. We've, we've literally have had well over 150 Let's Talk uh, inter interactions and really getting feedback from the community and from our staff both in a, in a format where we can kind of have a two-way conversation about what's going on as well as some anonymous feedbacks. So again, it's information that we can use to, to improve uh, our service to the, to the community and to our students. And then ultimately, in, in its, in its replica, or, um, represented in the, in the budget this year, is a communication specialist. As I look back at some of the, the previous revisions of the strategic framework, we really have been talking about a communications person relative to this, um, this goal since about 2011-12. And so I really feel like certainly with the financial uh, aspects, it's, we're at a point, as well as the need aspect, we're at that point. Um, next one in terms of engaging uh, business and civic community regularly, identifying strength and service learning projects. One of the components of our Next Generation Future Ready initiative is really to provide th this term real world or authentic uh, environments for students and for, for them to have projects. And so really that integration between school and community, that w to the extent that that becomes a partnership, it strengthens our ability to, to engage. We talk about engaging students in lifelong learning. The, the, the ability for our students at any level, kindergarten on up, to really see relevance to what they're learning and the impact that it can have on the community and vice versa, certainly for our community to see what are those activities that are going on in our classroom is critical. So our ability to expand those are, are important, improving our uh, community partnership and solving real world problems. You know, we've been analyzing districts that have gone out and, and have really robust um, internship programs at the secondary level in particular have really strong kind of building level themes around real world problems where they bring in experts from around the community to talk about what's going on in, in the environment. And many of you remember um, Ms. McCormick, Lynn McCormick from Harvest had a project where they looked at um, uh, <coughs> prosthetics, yeah, because they were orthopedics, prosthetics. Um, last year and really went and visited uh, over at, uh, at um, St. Joe's and, and, and looked at institutes in terms of really thinking about what that means and came back and, and did some. Those are the types of things we want to continue to encourage and goal to really focus this on that. Uh, continue to develop relationships with educational institutions of, of higher learning. We need to really continue to leverage Eastern Michigan, U of M and our other regional partners in particular. In doing so, you know, we, we do a lot of student teacher thing and other some research, but ultimately a lot of them have needs that they want to, to essentially partner with us in terms of research. And so our ability to, uh, to partner with them in those areas really is critical. Where do we go here? All right. Um, and then engage in enhanced relationships with parents and volunteers to support student success. Improving our volunteer, as you know, we have a lot of, of really active volunteers. A lot of reading goes on. We, we've talked at our group and have started to identify what are ways that we can categorize and seek what are other volunteer opportunities that we have within our community that, uh, that really would improve their interaction, our integration between the community and the school district. Um, supporting senior school alumni groups and, and doing it not necessarily just in an, an effort of, hey, alumni, can you, can you provide resources back, but certainly um, make sure they have, continue to have a positive <coughs> affinity with clean area schools moving forward. Can they come back here and, and, and send their students here? But again, that has a long-term uh, benefit to our community. Um, and then developing a building level sense of community. Um, one of the things and we see with our alumni groups, whether it be around an athletic team or a club that they're involved in, certainly a, a graduating class, but at the building level, to the extent that we have people who identify as Houghton Hot Rods or uh, Jensen Gen Gen Jets, you know, what types of things can we do to elicit a sense of community? And now moving forward, thinking about, and I know, uh, and I'll use Betty as an example, Harvest really focused on that fit, what they're calling kind of that fifth C, building a sense of community. How do you really integrate parent feedback and parent support um, within a build, at the building level to build a sense of community? And I know, and I'll use Laura as an example, talking about what are some things to do, you know, in, in buildings where we're at fourth grade all comes together. Can we build some community there? I think those are things that we've been talking about and are really part of goal number two. Our big group. Big group. Um, 
So we've got a, a big group, an important group, with Alex, Heather, Betty, Carol, myself, and Julie Helber. Everybody's here who helped with, with this goal. And again, this did combine the two academic goals, what used to be goal one and two, together into one primary goal. And you'll notice the, the main goal uh, gets rid of the by K through three part that used to be involved and really encompasses all our, stu all our students. So it reads, all students will meet or exceed state standards across all curricular areas and acquire the essential skills to be continuous learners and productive citizens in an increasingly global society. That's a mouthful, but it really does capture what we're trying to do with our um, academic programs. And so the first action step does begin with the idea that we really do need to keep our focus on early childhood education. And that is expand pre-kindergarten education programs and increase community awareness of programs. We talk about assimilating early childhood programs into the SAS culture. That's a nice job over at Woodland Meadows doing that with our Pooh Corner early education program. And we're going to have to be talking about that moving forward in terms of space at Woodland Meadows and how we look at expanding. Is that possible at Woodland Meadows? We're adding sections to reduce class size. And so we will continue to look at that in the expansion. Uh, increased child find efforts. That basically means we need to go out and identify who are the students in our community that need support to get into early childhood programs because there is tons of research that we need to get students into those early childhood programs, especially for students coming in more at-risk families where there's not as much vocabulary being used in the household. They're not, they're not getting as many early opportunities to read. And so we need to be able to identify who those students are in the district and bring them forward. Karen? How do you, how do, you do something? Do you work with like doctors and kids? Yeah, there, there's strategies like that, like you would make your programs be known at, at pediatricians, but it's also things that you would visit um, maybe some of our lower income areas in the district and try to have uh, meetings at uh, uh, various clubhouses around, for example, some of the um, uh, mobile home parks, for example, uh, other districts have had strategies where they'll go and have a uh, get to know you night and have pizza and we're looking at strategies like that to try to get to some of our families in need in the community. So those are, those are some examples of how other communities have done that. And then moving forward into our second action step that he's going to talk. I will point out that one thing we did try to do and, and um, Kurt and uh, the group I mentioned earlier is we have links inside of this document because it's a digital presence. And that allows people, when they look at the strategic framework, to go deeper into, well, what do these things mean? If people want to know what child find means, they can click on that link and, and dig in a little deeper as to what that does mean. So that's what those are, even though we're not going to go into those tonight. But so that's one of the things that we really found in the feedback we got when we presented to the administrative team was that there's a lot of jargonese, you know, education um, speak, especially in this particular goal, since it is the all incumbency goal. That's why we went backwards tonight. So those are links to definitions, or our definitions, how we as a district also define these things and the work that we want to do. So our second action step is to broaden instructional strategies across the curriculum, and this is about those critical thinking skills. Um, mindset, four C's instruction, metacognitive strategies. It's not about specific content, but the specific content is embedded in this action step. So this is getting across, it doesn't matter if it's kindergarten or AP physics. It's, we're looking at these kinds of instructional strategies and thinking strategies for our learners that we serve here in Saline Area Schools. Uh, we also talked about differentiation. So we're talking about meeting our students where they are, um, creating individualized learning experiences, really about personalization and, and customization, really. And, and part of that is kind of expanding our use of a multi-tiered system of support. Um, and there are really kind of two sides to that. There's the behavioral side and that's uh, positive behavioral interventions and supports, and then there's response to intervention, uh, which is really the academic side. So what we're talking about here is really a, a focus on instruction for all students, but when we have students who are not meeting those expectations, what are the interventions from a behavioral standpoint or an academic standpoint that we have in place? What does that look like to support those students who, who have those needs? And along with that, how do we progress monitor those students? What does that system look like? Okay. So number four is, where the magic happens uh, in Future Ready. You're right. Uh, Future Ready is really about maximizing the digital learning um, opportunities so kids can build capacity, build citizenship, build college and career readiness. 
and uh, inside of it I say where the magic happens because it's in the classroom, in a learning lab site where they can build classroom culture, um, community, where they can practice the four C's, where they can blend in the content, have the authentic learning exp experiences, and utilize it all in a, you know, a tech-based world. And uh, you know, we've been in this business for four years now and it's really pretty fabulous. And so this just highlights the importance of number four. Extra set number five is to broaden cultural competencies. Um, you, you may or may not know that back in 1991, Celine welcomed its first inclusion student back into the district. Um, and interestingly enough, we have Deb Budnick here who was the teacher in that program. So that's when we truly became an inclusive district and have in, increased our culturally diverse environments um, since that time. So what does that mean? What does culturally diverse mean? And it can be many, many different things. Race, gender, gender identity, um, religion, all sorts of different things. We want our students not only to be aware of, but to be accepting of those from all of those various diverse backgrounds. So that is how we hope to uh, increase our cultural competencies in all of the students. And that is goal number one. All right, questions? What I'd like to do is bring this to the board probably in August. Um, we will share this uh, document with you and then talk about having the board formally approve that as our, our strategic framework uh, as revised and we'll post on our website for the 16-17 year and we'll begin the revision process uh, again. Thank you to everyone for all your work on this. <coughs> I have to say, in the six years that we've had this, in my prior time on the board, this has got to be the best set of goals and district strategy that we pretty much ever had, because every year we would do goals, ultimately hardly ever meet them, but we just thrash through them. But this, I mean, is a set thing. I think we're very successful engaging everyone in the process. And we're carrying through on a lot of these owing to the fact that we were able to shuffle them down to four from our original five, so. I think it's a, it's, the structure is very good for us moving forward, I can thank you very much. seem to have the right team in place too. Any other comments? Thank you everyone for all your hard work. Um, our second study session topic is really just a <laughs> short discussion. The city of Saline's 150th birthday is this year, our sesquicentennial. And they have engaged the area school uh, central campus for fireworks this year. Uh, they will be on October 15th, which is the day before I think the official vote to go from village to city happened or city to village, one of those things. So somewhere I think 8.15ish, around dusk, uh, 30 minute maybe fireworks display some big four inch shells, it'll be very nice. Um, the committee has volunteers. We're still planning a little bit of um, food and entertainment maybe throughout um, the campus. Uh, we chose Central Campus mostly, thank you Rex for pointing out, parking all around. Uh, I think there's, I think 1100 parking spots. They said we'll utilize the library and other out uh, places, people from surrounding subdivisions should be able to either walk or sit on their front porch and watch them go up. So it, uh, people are pretty excited about it. So it's been 50 or 60 years since there have been fireworks in Saline. So we're hopeful with the metal roof completion here in that building. <laughs> 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 we'll all be educated there. Do not <laughs> notice that the shells are pointed at Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of method to our madness, but no. <laughs> planning and getting liberty all set. So does anyone have any, uh, I know uh, Superintendent Graydon checked with our insurance people and uh, the fireworks company will also name us as an additional insured. So I think we're covered that way. So. Any questions? <clears throat> Consent agenda. Can I have a motion to authorize the following items as part of the consent agenda? A, approval of the regular Board of Education meeting minutes of June 14th, 2016. B, approval 
a payment of the general fund accounts payable of June 28, 2016 in the amount of 876,150, excuse me, $151.48. C, receive and file the human resources report. D, approval of community education director Puffer's recommendation to reappoint Rob Shingle to a two-year term on the CARES board effective July 1st, 2016. E, approval of the field trip approval form as submitted by Superintendent Graydon, the French language trip to Quebec, Canada on June 18th to 24th, 2017. F, approval of the early graduation request submitted by Superintendent Graydon. G, approval of payment of bond fund accounts payable of June 28, 2016 in the amount of $430,000. $477 and 35 cents. So moved. Support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries 7 0. Items on our next agenda. Um, it's largely a, a kind of an organizational light meeting, a business functions with banking, various items will be on the agenda. It should be a relatively short agenda. Our next meeting of the Board of Education will be held on July 12, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. here in the Liberty School Media Center. Closed session. Can I have a motion to enter closed session of the Board of Education at 7.15 p.m. with the intent to re-enter open session at 8 p.m. for the purpose of the superintendent's evaluation? This will be a roll call vote. Vice President Austin? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I made an assumption there that I should vote yeah. for <laughs> Karen and Dennis. Thank you. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Vice President Austin? Aye. Trustee Brilliant? Aye. Secretary Delhay? Aye. Trustee Hepp? Aye. Board President Heineck? Aye. Trustee Bonas? Yes. Trustee Valente? Aye. So we will get started in about three minutes. Thank you, everyone. Have a good summer. We don't see you next week. Thank you.